How's everyone doing today? My name is Yupari and in this week's portrait painting video we are going to be going back to the basics. So in this video I'm going to guide you through each step of the way trying to keep it as basic as I can. Alright, getting started here. The first thing I'm going to do is take a big bristle brush and spread some mineral spirits on my surface. And I'm going to use this to help me with my drawing and my eraser brush. And I'll explain that uh, further in a little bit. So I'm just going to spread a tone on the surface now. And I'm going to want the mineral spirits to sit for about a couple minutes or so. And it's going to help me with my drawing and eraser brush. And of course the mineral spirits will uh, dissipate after 20 or 30 minutes. but it should help me in the initial start of the drawing. And here we have our model for today, Mo, and I'm going to keep an image of him to the top left corner of your screen so you can refer to it as I develop the painting. All right, for my palette today, I'm going to be using zinc white, so that's just zinc white, raw umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, sap green, cobalt teal, ultramarine blue and ivory black. And if you would like to know more about the materials that I'm using and exactly which paint tubes and what panel I'm using, what brushes I'm using, I'm going to type up all that dis all that information in the description box below. So just scroll down to the bottom of the video and you will be able to see exactly which materials that I'm using. So the first thing I'm going to do is with just my size 2 filbert bristle brush I'm going to try to establish the top and the bottom of the head and space. Now we're going to focus uh, primarily on the basics so let's try to take it one step at a time. So here we have the back of the head, the corner of the head here, and I'm not trying to get a perfect outline. I'm just trying to get an idea of where I want to place everything. So I'm going to let the brush run free. I think the the important thing about the start is to not worry too much about trying to capture the perfect likeness of the model. Instead, it's a good idea to just work in such a way that you're letting the brush roam free. Now, I am taking into account the fact that the top and the bottom is probably about equal to the left and to the right. So those dimensions I'm actually going to think about quite early on as I put this placement on the surface. Uh, but for now this is pretty much just a, a generic shape, a generic shape for the head that will help me see if this composition is something that I would want to further develop into the final painting. So it pretty much is just a sketch, just trying to get the angle of the shoulder there, angle of the neck. Now I'm going to place the center line of the head somewhat at an angle like this. Again, just working very loosely, I'm not trying to ca catch something that's picture perfect right away. And I'm even going to start to uh, mass in a little shape here for the, the entire side plane of the head. Just a little dark shape right here. And since the paint is going to be like this, it's going to be pretty runny uh, for the first 20 or 30 minutes or so. I'm going to try to exploit those uh, abilities that the paint has to just easily flow onto the surface. Again, I'm just trying to work with simple shapes. Just simple shapes. So here we have a whole division for the side plane of the head in a very simplistic manner, trying to capture the entire structure of the head in just a few simplistic marks. 
Now before long, I'm going to really want to put in a, a pretty exacting shape for the head, just using simple straight lines and angles. So here we have a little curve here. So now I'm going to look at where this point here meets with the bottom. So I pretty much do little gestural marks like this to try to relate one portion of the head to another portion of the head. Chin comes out to about here. Chin, the chin comes out a little bit further to the right probably than I have it. Uh, but the idea is to keep this simple and easy to work with so that when the time comes to make corrections or to build upon this, the corrections or the building process will be simple and easy to understand. And the ear is pretty much just a brush stroke for now. So let's go and put in a little shape now for the axis of the eyes. Just a little simple rectangular shape for both of them. A little mark here for the for the nose. So pretty early on I'm going to be telling myself uh, physically uh, what the model is doing relative to me. So the model is turned at approximately three quarter relative to me so I'm going to want to establish the turn of the model fairly early on. So here's one corner of the eye socket and the corner of the nose. And let's try to keep these shapes as simplistic as possible. Now this shape here for the corner of the side of the eye socket is going to be pretty important for establishing the turn that the model is making relative to me. I'll angle here for the side of the head. Again, I never really know if any of these angles are just right. So rather than trying to uh, take a photograph and trace it, I'm really trying to observe these shapes in relation to one another and then make decisions based upon that. Now there's nothing wrong with uh, tracing an image. If you want to do that, that is perfectly fine and I encourage it uh, as an exercise in trying to see how far you can push simple shapes like light and shadow. Uh, so just think about that. Think about the light and shadow as the most important elements in developing the overall impact of the picture that you're looking at. But for now, I have an angle now for the the tilt that the eyes are making. They're pretty straight, but again, it may look a certain way to me now, and then in a little while, it will look completely different. So it's all about making making a mark, standing back, and then seeing how these shapes relate to one another. So here we have. It's a simple brush stroke for where I would want an eye to be placed. And then the other eye, now it looks like it's at an angle, somewhat like this. And again, nothing's really set in stone. I'm just trying to gather information. All this is is gathering information. Now on a vertical, this tear duct meets somewhat with the corner of the side of the nose. Optically, I can tell this distance might be too crunched. So I'm just going to make this mark go down a little bit further. Now using a dry filbert bristle brush, so this is approximately a size 4 filbert bristle brush, I can push this shape down now a little bit. So right now, the most important thing to me is trying to establish the turn that the model is making relative to me. So I'm really trying to work these distances here as accurately as I can now, just using simple shape. And I can kind of tell from the side view, the peripheral view of my eyes, 
this, this angle is probably a little bit further out, so now I'm going to start to push that out a little bit more. Something like that. And again, it's important to make your marks as simple as possible, especially with a portrait, because things are going to move probably about a good couple hundred times until you pinpoint exactly where you want something to be. So here's a little place marker for the bottom of the mouth, just trying to guide where I want this feature to go. Now it probably is a little bit too far to the left, but that's all right. I'm just trying to get a feel for where things are. And keeping things a little bit loose, but simplistic is an extremely good habit uh, to maintain, especially in portraiture. This makes an angle about here. And don't be too caught up in the aesthetics at this point. Don't worry about the aesthetics. Just worry about the simple shape and trying to read the simple shape as accurately as possible whether you're working from life or working from a photo reference. Just keep it simple and easy for you to understand. So here is the corner of the mandible. This little angle here is the ramus of the jaw. So this little corner of the mandible uh, is pretty close to being matching up on a horizontal with the corner of the mouth, but just a little bit lower. So here's the corner of the mouth. I'm going to push this shape a little bit further down. And right now I'm just trying to place the features within this large shape that I have established for the head. And I'm not really I'm not really caught up with the half tones by any means. Now it may look like I have half tones here or there, but I assure you that I'm not thinking about the half tones right now. I'm just thinking about this simple shape. Nose comes out a little bit there. And I'm going to play with these shapes for a good while until I'm confident enough with these shapes that I can add color onto them. Um, but I'm going to keep trying to further refine these shapes. Now here's the corner of the zygomatic bone, the cheekbone right here, a little L shape looking thing here. That's all that is matches up kind of with the corner of the eye socket on a vertical. So now I'm going to follow the angle a little bit down. And again, I'm not trying to get a picture perfect rendition of anything right now. Just trying to get a feel for where everything is. Keeping it as simple as possible for me to understand. We have the hairline coming up a little bit there. Now the ear, I don't want to lose the ear, uh, but that is just going to happen in the way that we're working and it's all right. It's pretty much a lost and found. Painting a lot of times is lost and found. So now let's look at a horizontal. Now the eye is a little bit higher up on a horizontal than the ear, but just a little bit. And that just a little bit is kind of the thought process that goes along in my head most of the time when I'm trying to place things. Now the ear will suffice as just a little blob, so now let's see if I can get this blob uh, to be in the relative correct position uh, in relation to the features. So the ear might actually come a little bit further to the right of your screen. So just moving the blob a little bit more to the right of your screen. Just a little bit. Right to about there. Now this angle here between the two eyes is something I'm going to want to establish as accurately as I possibly can. And I'm going to use 
just a little uh, mark here for the corner of the tear duct to the left of your screen. Just a little brush stroke right there. Very simply, just one brush stroke. Now, I notice that this eye needs to be a little more at an angle like this. So I'm going to go ahead and with a little piece of paper towel, just erase a little bit down here. Now this angle is very subtle, but it's like something like this. Very subtle, that might even be too much. Um, and I'm trying to make these, uh, these measurements as optically as possible. Notice I don't have a grid or anything like that on my panel. And again, whatever works for you. If you want to have a grid on your canvas or your paper uh, to figure out where these, these shapes fit, all the power to you. So now I'm going to place in the, the iris. And I make a mark like this, and then I have to stand back. Standing back really helps me see what my painting or my drawing really looks like. So here we have an angle now for the side of the eye. And again, it's, it's going to be pretty cartoony looking for a while. Uh, that is, it's going to look kind of like a cartoon for a little bit, uh, but that's okay. I'm just trying to get just this much information and then try to get it as accurately placed as possible. So now I may have a problem with this distance here. So let's just let it be a single brush stroke for now. Almost just a single brush stroke. And again, try to get this angle. Push the shape down a little bit. Erase a little bit here. And again, all I'm trying to relate is this corner of the tear duct to this corner of the tear duct of this eye. Even though I can't see the tear duct on this side, I can still relate these two points. Top of the corner of the eyelid right there. That might help me place things a little more. It's also useful to look at the negative shapes too, like this, just the negative of this shape. I heard a friend of mine once say, if you don't know exactly what you're looking at or you're trying to draw something that you're not even uh, too familiar with, it's a good idea to think of yourself as some type of alien or some type of extraterrestrial being that just arrived on the earth. Now bear with me. What does this shape look like? So what does this shape look like? And let's forget about the fact that it's an eye right now. Just forget about that. Just the shape itself. The peak of convexity of the shape is a little bit right there in relation to the bottom of the curve of the eye right there. Just trying to simplify the thought process in my head a little bit into just a set of shapes. Just as simple as that. Because this can get really complicated really quickly if we let it. So let's try to keep it as simplistic as possible. Just a little dark shape there. And so now I think that's about it for the angle of the eyes. Again, I'm not too worried about the final render of anything. I'm just focused right now on the placement of these two features. 
Now let's compare that to the nose. The corner of this tear duct in relation to the nose, they pretty much match up. I'm going to have to erase a little bit here. So I'm using the a little piece of paper towel as an eraser. So I'm really trying to think about this as a drawing. Let's just think about it as a drawing. Even though we're using paint, it's kind of like a mind game. You're painting, but you're actually drawing. Remember, a drawing is just, in a sense, drawing is just problem solving. So we have the corner of the nose here matching up on a vertical um, in relation to this tear duct. And that is a tangible observation, measurement, whatever you want to call it. And now from there, I'm going to move a little bit to the right. The dark of the nostril, just very simply place that in there. And then follow through to the other side. The dark of the nostril, and I can use another vertical right here. So the corner of this nostril is a little bit further out than the corner of this eye, I believe. And again, I'll show you how I set up my photo reference uh, design. I don't really have the photograph right next to my panel. I have it a little bit further out, and I'll show you right here. So I have it a little bit further out so that I can make the experience of painting from the photo reference as similar as possible to painting from life. And again, I'm really just trying to get these, just these light and dark patterns as accurately as I can now. Uh, still with very little amounts of information. The small amounts of information that are accurate will help me a tremendous amount for trying to develop this painting further with color and form modeling and all that. So just a little shape there for the, the upper eyelid and we'll come back into the bottom eyelid with color. And so now I'm just gonna, what's a little, uh, more adjustment to my paper towel. I'm going to try and now carve out where I think the the pupil, or sorry, the iris is going to be. I always get those two confused. But now the orientation of the, the eye, I'm trying to match up these two eyes so that they look like they're looking at the same point. And this is Definitely not something I can hope to to achieve right away. It's going to take some tinkering to try and get the eye to look in the right location. Just trying to get something down to relate. All right, so now the top of the eye is going to be kind of important. So the this shape right here for the the upper eyelid. And I'm trying to do as much as I can uh, with just simple shapes with this uh, eraser brush. And I'm uh, sorry, this is a little piece of eraser, this makeshift eraser that I have with the paper towel and the raw umber. So that when I come back in with paint, I don't have to worry too much about uh, where each feature is going to be placed. And sometimes I don't do this. Sometimes I just go in with paint and then figure it out right away. But I find that this is just a little bit easier and a little bit more basic to work with. Look at this, just a little corner right there. And now we have the turn of the eye socket. And the hard part is the basics, the, the very, the, the most pivotal bits of information are in these light and dark shapes. And this is, 
this will lay down the fundamentals for the values and the colors to go on top of. A little angle here. Almost just looks like a straight up little triangle with a little corner here. And that's all I need for that dark shape. Now let's do a little check to see if the bottom of the chin is going to match up uh, in relation to the, the eyes that we placed. So hold your brush out, preferably uh, with your arm straight out. The corner of the eye socket here, tear duct, matches up with the bottom of the chin. Now let's move this up. Now the corner of the eye socket, you can see, and now you can see this little distance here from the top of the head to that. I just lost a measurement, but I could see that this shape here from the tear duct to the bottom of the chin is a little bit larger than this distance here from the tear duct to the top of the head. And that's actually all right. In fact, the top of the head might actually come a little bit further down. And uh, and this is happening, you're, so you're seeing a larger distance here because the model is in perspective in relation to me. So I'm actually a little bit lower. Uh, so I'm looking up at the model a little bit in perspective. And so that's why the ear is fitting a little bit lower. And think about it like, like the little egg here. So here is the center axis of the eyes and the nose. So this would be, say, straight up. But then when we're looking down, then we're going to actually see the axis go up here and the nose get a little bit closer. Uh, so that is when we're lower. Uh, but we're, if we're above, then we're going to see a little bit less. So we're going to see more of the top of the head if we're a little bit higher up in relation to the model. And don't worry, I'm going to go in with the background color and uh, that will be gone. But in any case, so that allowed me to know that the top of the head had to go down a little bit. So now, where is the corner of the jaw? So the corner of the jaw, I kind of relate to the corner of the mouth. So the corner of the jaw does fit a little bit lower, but not that far. So it's probably about here. And now the paint's definitely, or the wash that I had before of mineral spirits is definitely dry. Which is good. It gave me enough time uh, to figure out the basic shape of the head. And then once it started to settle in and dry, uh, that's when I started with the paper towel as my eraser. And now that it's even like almost completely gone, that wash of mineral spirits, now I'm actually at a place where I'm going to be able to just make little minor corrections. The corner of the jaw goes about there. Just little minor corrections here and there. And now I'm going to be able to go in with color and further solidify the drawing. So on a horizontal, the nose is a little bit lower. Or sorry, the nose is a little bit higher than the bottom of the ear. So it's about right. About there. Let's not forget the corner of the side of the neck here. So shoulders were on the little, little turn, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. All right, let's get into the colors. So I'm actually going to dip a brush into a little bit of my walnut oil. So I'm gonna be using walnut oil as a thinner. And of course my mineral spirits as my brush cleaner. And then dab it dry a little bit on the paper towel so I don't have too much walnut oil. And so I'm gonna go in with the, uh, the shadow color as a side plane of the head. So I'm going to start off with my raw umber. And uh, when I try to mix up colors, especially my first color, I tend to blur my eyes at the image. So I see a little bit of green when I blur my eyes. So the raw umber and the sap green, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre, why not, into the mixture. Now when I mix like this kind of vigorously, 
uh, it will shake the uh, surface that I'm working on a little, a little bit. So I'm going to try to minimize uh, that motion. Okay, so a little spot right there of value. Now that is too dark of a value for that area, but I can actually use it for this corner of the uh, the shadow of the the cavity of the eye socket. It's a little of value there, and then with a little bit of alizarin crimson. Uh, so for my darker shadows, particularly a shadow in the corner of the wing of the nose like this, I tend to err on the warmer side. So just a little shape right there. And so now I know I said I was going to start with that, but that mixture actually was nice for these areas. A little bit more sap green uh, for this darker accent here. So I pretty much like to start off with my darks. Okay, so now let's go back in and try to get this value. So I think about painting in terms of, let's think about it very basically. So shape, value, and then color. Within any kind of shape, you can have whatever number of values, whatever number of colors. Um, and within any value, you can have a very broad spectrum of colors that fits in it. Uh, so that's why I kind of try to focus primarily on the shape first, just those shapes of light and shadow. So now again, still too dark. So some more yellow ochre, just to bring up that value a little bit. And uh, a little bit of cobalt teal. Why not see it a little bit cooler than I have it? A little bit of cobalt teal and maybe a tad bit of my zinc white, just a little bit. And now let's try that out, and that, that might work. That might be about it. So I'm going to go ahead now and use this to help me uh, further draw this shadow shape. So there's a little bit of a corner right here following through the bottom of the zygomatic bone there. Working our brush all the way around here, very simply seeing this little divot here. And this little corner here is created by the uh, the orbicularis oris, making this little shape right here. And the orbicularis oris is this like large structure here that's encompassing the structure of the mouth. Alright, now I have this color and I'm just going to flatten out uh, the shadow shape, so I'm just going to cover this entire area now. And I'm going to try not uh, to lose the little shape that I had for the ear there, so I'm going to leave little traces of where I want the ear to be. Now for the background color, I'm going to use a different brush. And I'm going to designate this brush uh, as the designated background brush. And so I, I thinned out the paint a little bit with some of the walnut oil and dabbed it dry on the paper towel. So my first guess of that background value is that it's uh, just a little darker than the, uh, the value of the tone on my panel. And again, if you want to know exactly uh, what materials I'm using, uh, go ahead and look in the description box below. And I would have I will have all of that typed up. And so now I'm mixing up a nice little gray with some ultramarine blue, some ivory black, and my zinc white. And it's fairly cold, so a little more cobalt teal into that mixture. Thin it down just a little bit more with the walnut oil. Let's see how this works. So, uh, yeah, that's about, that's about it. I mean, I'm not trying to perfectly match uh, the color with what I see, but rather just try to uh, form some type of relationship. So this color in relation to this color, if you paint them side by side, you'll notice that the background color is much more blue in comparison to 
the color of the shadow side of the head. And so now I'm going to be using paint to further develop the drawing. So let's try to get the peak of convexity for the top of the head. So somewhat here. So the top of the skull is somewhat there. So using my background color, I can also further uh, facilitate the drawing as well. Still trying to use straight lines and angles. So now a little divot there for the uh, frontal ridge of the skull, but we'll get more into that when we get into the planes. All right, so now I'm just going to cover cover the little uh, little demo figures that I had there. And so now with this same mixture, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. So I'm going to switch to a smaller brush just momentarily, and I'm going to use it uh, to help me place the corners of the side of the face. So now, here is where the shape of the bottom of the lower eyelid will go. This corner of the nose projects a little further out right there. And on a vertical, the nose is a little bit further out. Just a little bit. Just about there. Again, I'm using my eye to make these distinctions. Just with my eye. When I try to see vertical distances like that, I will probably close one eye. Now this corner of the mouth also goes a little bit further out to the right. So let's make a little, little divot there. And then stand back and see if it's too far or too short. And it may be just about right, but I can't really know until I get the colors in there. I'm trying to build this outline as opposed to just moving my brush freely and tracing it. Now that's nice for an effect to do something like this, where you perfectly carve something out. Uh, so it's a nice little aesthetic thing, but for now I'm just focused on uh, the actual dimensions of the outside shape. Alright, so that's about it for that. Now I'm just going to go and fill in a little bit more of the uh, the background color now. Add a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit more of the white into it. So looking at the reference, the background color is actually a little bit lighter than the flesh tones. So I'm taking that into account as I make these mixtures because the flesh tones, the value of the flesh tones is going to be a little bit darker than the values of the background. But the values on the background aren't quite uh, bright white either, not as light. Now let's look at the peak of convexity for the the corner of the side of the head. Now remember, peak of convexity is just this point here, the point furthest on the top of the curve. Uh, so say if it was a hill like this, the peak of convexity would be where the little egg would sit, or the little, say, little ball would sit on the top of the corner. The perfect corner, the perfect point on the top of the corner here would be the peak of convexity. So the peak of convexity, I can use a or vertical here. It's probably here. So push this a little bit further in. It's probably there. And there is some anatomical significance to the back of the skull here uh, being the furthest point out. So I also kind of am using a little bit of anatomical knowledge for that. Now I'm just going to fill in the rest of the the background, just a little just a little vignette here for the background. All right, let's get into some of the flesh tones. So the way I'm going to develop this one is I'm going to uh, render the planes out uh, on the forehead and then move my way down 
So I'm making a mixture here for the dark light uh, for this corner here uh, with a little bit of my raw umber, some alizarin crimson. Let's use a tad bit of sap green and the zinc white. So if you're wondering why I'm using zinc white is that it is a transparent white. And I like to use transparent whites because they allow me to use more of the white paint without um, sacrificing the integrity of the color too much uh, if I were using uh, something like titanium white. Uh, though I like to use titanium white, I used it for years, um, but lately I've just been using these transparent whites more. A little bit of cobalt teal into the mixture. Uh, so let's get a feel for this, this dark light. So that is about where I want it to be for this side plane of the face. Maybe a little cooler. A little bit more of the cobalt teal. Why not? Alright. So now let's try to feel out this plane. And I'm letting the brush touch a little bit of the... Uh, the mixture for uh, the shadow. I'm not a perfectionist. It's all right if the uh, a little bit of the shapes of light and dark touch. All right. So I'm going to extend this plane a little bit further out than need be, and uh, the reason is that I think it's easier to uh, add lighter colors on top of darker colors. Uh, than to add darker colors on top of lighter colors, but not always the case. Okay, so that's one uh, little plane there for the side of the head. Now we're going to go in with a little, uh, little of my zinc white, some of my cadmium yellow. Raise the value just a little bit, and just like that, build another plane. I'm moving the brush kind of uh, horizontally for the most part because uh, if I move vertically it tends to tends to glare a little bit more. So now with the sap green and I'm going to go a little bit darker and warmer than need be to cover this. And uh, I've called this a false color in the past, so that's just the same mixture, but I just added a little bit more sap green. So I've called it a false color in the past, and it just means that I'm just trying to, just trying to get it covered. A little more sap green. Just trying to get something that's a little bit darker and a little bit warmer than need be, so I can come back in and uh, raise the values up, and then uh, make it lighter in value, and then make it cooler. And hue. Okay, so flattening this out now. And I'm just going to try to maintain just the curve of this area of the forehead and this plane here of the side. And I'm going to go back in and retouch this color now. A little bit more ultramarine blue. Some more of the raw umber. Now I'm going to go ahead and Reevaluate this shape here. A little bit darker as it turns away from the light. But it's still a little bit warmer. So now I'm going to be switching to a different brush uh, for the lighter planes of the forehead. So let's go into the zinc white, uh, a little bit of cadmium orange. Why not? Zinc white, a little bit of cadmium orange. Zinc white again. I'm gonna dilute it a little bit. Some of my walnut oil, only a little bit. Now let's place this plane right here. This is where I would believe that plane would fit. And this is gonna be the plane of the the head that's going to be most perpendicular to the light source. Light source is coming this way hitting this plane directly. It's like rain falling down on a flat table. It's receiving the most of the light. And then as the planes 
angle away from this area, they're going to be correspondingly a little bit darker. So it's all about the angle of the plane in relation to the light source. So now we're going to be putting in another plane for the uh, the front of the forehead. This little plane right here. And then this whole area here following this light is actually going to be a little bit lighter in value. And it's going to be a little bit of, yeah, let's put some cadmium red, a little bit more on the pinkish side. But you can't really see that color distinction too much. So I'm going to work each plane uh, first thinking about its angle with respect to the light. And then I'm going to think about uh, the color, the relative color. So remember that was a little bit warmer. This was a little bit more on the, uh, the cadmium orange side. Now this whole plane here is going to be something kind of tricky. So I'm going to start off with the yellow ochre on top of what's already there. See what happens first. Now the value is too light, so a little bit of the um, alizarin crimson and sap green. I actually like to use complementary colors quite a bit. And now this value would be something that I would want to use for my other brush. So this brush is for my lighter planes. And then this brush here with the blue is going to be more for my middle value planes. So I'm going to wash that brush that I used in a little bit. Uh, so I like to keep specific brushes for different areas of the, uh, of the value scale. So the same mixture that I described to you earlier wasn't working, but then I put a little bit of cadmium orange. Seems to be getting closer to where I want it to be. And it's really, uh, it's a push and pull. You place one color in and then it doesn't seem to work. And then all you do is add a little bit of cadmium orange into it and then all of a sudden it works. So now this whole plane here uh, the frontal ridge of the forehead is a little bit lighter in value as it is facing the light a little bit more. So let's go ahead and raise this value up a little bit. And I have to squint my eyes and stand back so that I make sure that the overall value scheme that I have here is darker than this value. I uh, remember that I noticed that the flesh tones are just a little bit darker in value in relation to the background. And so the brush may have some residue of previous mixtures. So let's talk about that. So now if you were a purist, a person that is purely trying to capture a perfect perfectly clean color mixture, then you would be using a palette knife to mix every color. And that's all right, but I find that I like to let some of the colors mix with one another. It kind of creates a nice little uh, muted color family. I tend to prefer more naturalistic muted flesh tones uh, than say brightly chromatic ones, but I entertain them time by time. So back to the alizarin crimson and the sap green. I'm going to try to get a nice little uh, muted value now to place here on the top corner of the frontal ridge. This little value here. And notice I'm starting to accumulate a little glare so I'm going to use my fan brush. This large brush here, just a cheap synthetic brush, is my fan brush. And moving it horizontally helps me to eliminate some of the glare. And 
Now this whole area up here is actually a little bit darker, so let's describe that. Now this brush, of course, is my shadow brush, so I'm going to use it to paint that shape. So ultramarine blue, a little bit of raw umber. Let's paint that in there. A little bit of a darker corner here. Let's not lose the fact that this is the uh, peak of convexity for the top of the forehead. And following through on this side, we're going to find out that this corner is a little bit darker. But I'm trying to keep the shadow values relatively flat. Uh, so, meaning I'm not going to do too much in the shadows for this painting. Use the fan brush again. So, I'm starting to establish the large value families uh, for the planes on the forehead. So remember, when we were blocking in with the, the lines, just the raw umber, we were using straight lines and angles to place the features of the head in relation to one another. And that, uh, that idea of using straight lines and angles translates to what we're doing now with planes. So a straight line can be analogous to a plane. Just a flat area like that. Now I'm actually going to dip my light brush into some of the mineral spirits. Dab it dry on the paper towel. And that should do it. And now I'm going to go back in with that mixture of the cadmium orange and the white. To reestablish that value. Again, it's too much white. So back to the cadmium orange. Something about there. Now notice we're going to start to develop a nice volume uh, with these shapes when we relate each individual plane in relation to the surrounding ones given their relative location uh, their relative angle in relation to the light source used a little bit of cobalt teal into that mixture here for these planes and as it trails to the side here I, I notice it's a little warmer yet a little bit lighter, so switching to my half tone brush with some alizarin crimson and some uh, of the zinc white. One thing I, I noticed that changed when I started using more of the transparent whites is that I kind of feel like I unlocked alizarin. The alizarin colors, alizarin is a pretty transparent red now don't quote me on that. I may be getting it wrong, but it feels like it's a transparent red. So using a transparent white with a transparent red kind of unlocked for me the uh, the abilities that I can obtain with using a transparent white. All right, so now I'm going to switch back to my light plane brush. And with the same mixture I had there, I'm going to trail it off to the bottom of the glabella, this plane here, the glabella. Still noticing a little bit more orange in that mixture. A little bit more orange there. Now I'm noticing that this side of the, the shadow just by making the comparison from these colors to these colors, this needs to get a little darker. So I'm going to go in with the uh, raw umber again. Raw umber, alizarin crimson, some of the sap green, ultramarine blue. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and reestablish the shape now. So. I can also use this to help facilitate the drawing as well. So I think this needs to come out just a little bit more this way. 
uh, to better describe the zygomatic bone, cheekbone. It's a little further out like that. And the value is much, uh, much darker here actually. I'm just going to go ahead and paint that in there. Let's flatten it out still. I'm going to use my fan brush to uh, help me get rid of some of this glare in a little bit. Can't forget the peak of convexity is here. I'm back to the fan brush to help get rid of that glare. So now I'm going to go ahead and paint the planes of this. Uh, so this is one third of the head. There's another third and another third. So I'm going to go ahead and try to work the planes on this third. So I'm going to start off with uh, the half tones right about here. So I'm going to go in with the half tone brush, alizarin crimson and the sap green. Two colors that meet together very nicely, even though you wouldn't believe it since they're they are complementary. Alright, so let's see if that value works out for this corner here. Just a little touch. The value seems to work out, but this is too warm. So that alizarin crimson is uh, a little, there's a little too much alizarin crimson. So back to the sap green. One more sap green. Let's see what happens. Uh, say about here. That might be working. I'm going to go back in with the fan brush to get rid of the glare. So that could be working. So let's go ahead and uh, let's take note first that this whole plane here that I'm painting in is facing away from the light even more than these planes here on the side of the frontal ridge of the forehead. So these values, all it means is that these values are going to be a little bit darker right here. It's a little bit lighter up there. So let's go into the mixtures we already had. The fan brush again. Alright, so let's look at the side planes uh, correspondingly to one another. So this side plane i paint that in and compare it to this side plane. So this one, uh, this may be a little bit more on the pinkish side. So let's get the cadmium red into this. Cadmium red, the zinc white. And that would be too pink. So let's, so let's use some of the cobalt teal. Why not? Let's see what happens. All right, let's see what happens with this value. Color may be just about right, uh, but the value is not right. But this color might actually work for these planes here. So why not use them for these planes? Right there. That is the zygomatic plane. That is the cheekbone. All right, in any case, let's go back to this side plane. Back to the ultramarine blue, sap green mixture. Uh, but again, it needs to be a little bit more pink, so the cadmium red will have to make do. And darken it a little more. Let's use the raw umber. Alright, let's see what happens now. That's about right. That can work. Maybe a little more cadmium red, just a little bit. Right there. All right, let's see how this works. That looks better. So now let's consider the shape of this whole plane. So it's wrapping around like this, giving us just a little light for the corner of the little concavity of the eye socket there. That plane goes all the way down here. But now as we get to here, there's going to be a darker side plane. A darker light so it's gonna go let's go in with the raw umber lizard and crimson let's not complicate these mixtures too much so just 
raw umber and alizarin crimson till I think I have the value I want. Now let's place it in there. Uh, it's about it's about what I want. So now let's follow through with the wing of the nose, the side of the wing of the nose. So that's about what I want. Now this plane here is a little bit darker than this plane, but it's still lighter than the shadow. A little tricky there, so what we already had and the uh, yellow ochre. Spin the brush a little bit. All right, let's see what we can get. And that may be about where I want it to be, but then I lost the shape. So I was gonna go back in with the shadow brush. Just use the shadow mixture we already had. Create a little shape right there. And that's it. Okay. Now let's follow through with the rest of these middle planes. So this plane here is a little bit lighter as it's facing the light more. And it's also a little bit more on the orangey pink side. So let's go back to this little puddle on the palette. And this was a little bit more orangey pink. So mixing on the colors I already had, just added a little bit more cadmium orange into the mixture with the uh, with the zinc white and then some of the cadmium red Let's see what happens so that's about what I want so this plane is facing the light a little bit more and this plane makes a shape something like this or it's wrapping around and then meeting the side plane of the nose right there. Now, I can't forget about this plane here on the corner of the side of the eye. It's actually a little bit darker and it's a little bit, I'd say more on the muted color side. So try to kill off the color a little bit with the raw umber. Raw umber is good to neutralize some colors. So now this plane here, very little tiny plane here, paint that in there and might might have made it too dark, but now that plane might actually work with this area, so let's paint that in there. Now this area is facing the light a lot less than this area, so therefore it's going to be catching less light. And look uh, following through on the other side, uh, this is about the same value, so I'm just going to put that in there. But it's a little bit more on the orangey side. So now let's get back to this plane that I was talking about. Let's go in with the background color and a little bit of the zinc white. Why not? See if we can get this value about where I want it. That's about closer to where I want so notice I let some of the panel show here uh, because this value is much lighter. This plane is catching a lot of light and so is this one. So I'm going to leave these two be for now along with this top plane of the nose. And I'm going to focus on this little plane here following through the bottom of the zygomatic bone. So I'm going to clean off that brush a little bit with my mineral spirits and my paper towel. I'm going to go ahead and use the same mixtures that I had before. So the alizarin crimson and the sap green. A little bit of raw umber into it. Just to neutralize the brightness of that color. So this plane right about here, maybe a little bit more sap green. And some cobalt teal. Why not? Alright, so this plane, that is too dark. So I'm going to go in with the zinc white. And zinc white is a pretty nice middle white. And again, if you don't want to use something like zinc white or lead white, um, there are alternatives that you can get. Uh, there's a um, flake white replacement from Gamblin, and that's also a very uh, 
nice transparent white, but not quite as transparent as lead white or zinc white. So there is the dark light for the zygomatic bone turning away from the light, but it's a little bit lighter on the bottom, so let's use a little bit of yellow ochre. The zinc white, just a little bit right there. Go back into that mixture that I had and allow it to meet the shadow shape. So that's about it for that. Now I'm going to switch brushes to my light brush. So this area here is cooler. So let's keep the colors that are on the brush. And I believe I was mixing here before up there. So uh, actually, let's keep that and then add the cobalt teal and the zinc white. More cobalt teal than quite. All right, let's see what happens with this mixture. And that's about where I want it to be. So this whole plane here is catching much more light and it's much cooler in terms of the hue, the temperature of the hue. So more, more cobalt teal. A little bit more cobalt teal right there. That area is catching much more light. But that might be too bright. So let's bring it down a little bit with these flesh tones. About there. So now that plane is kind of where I want it to be. Normally I would follow through on the other side of the face, but you can't really see that side. So Gonna follow through with the dark light that I need for the bottom of the eyelid there. Switching brushes now to the half tone brush. So this is pretty much what I had for the dark light on this corner. Or sorry, on the, sorry on this corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint that in there using the same mixture that I had, and that's about it for that. All right, so here is going to be lighter but here's where i wouldn't trust the photo reference for these values here it's kind of at least on my screen it's kind of blasting them out uh, and i know that they're not going to be straight white like the image is showing so i'm going to tint it with a tad bit of the cadmium orange So that's about that's about where I want the value to be, but it might be too orange. So let's go with the cobalt teal. So cobalt teal and cadmium orange are a nice grouping of colors that uh, work together with the transparent white kind of nicely to create a flesh tone. And the same kind of thing goes with um, the alizarin and the sap green those two are nice so sap green and ultramarine blue can make a very nice flesh tone and so can cobalt teal and cadmium orange so i'm going to let uh, the brush kind of move along the side over here to try to paint an intermediate uh, value between this plane and this plane but I don't want to lose the distinction between those two planes, so a little bit more of the white. It's a little touch there. So now the side of the eye. I'm going to use a, a little bit something closer to that dark light. So we're going to have the raw umber onto this dark region of the palette. Notice now the values are starting to get darker as I move lower on the palette. Kind of helps me to have a value scale when I get further along into the values. So raw umber, the alizarin crimson, a little bit more of the sap green. You probably would have guessed that. So the sap green, alizarin crimson, raw umber, Alright, let's see what happens. 
And now that value is kind of close to where I want it to be, but it's still too red. So I'm going to use more of the, the sap green and actually some cobalt teal. Try to make it less warm. And that's about what I want. That's about the value that I want for that side plane of the eye. I'll follow through on the bottom. Of the bottom of the lower eyelid. This whole shape here is facing away from the light. So it's getting a little bit darker. Now while we have these values, let's, let's give his eyebrow back. Eyebrows are kind of something that uh, I get and then I lose and then I get and I lose several times. Uh, but it's important to focus on the the uh, underlying structure of the eye socket rather than the details of the eyebrow. So again just a little corner for the eyebrow here. And that's all about all I want to say for that my fan brush, get rid of some of the glare. Now I'm gonna follow through with some of the values that are getting more light around here. So I'm gonna go in first with the middle lights. So working with this little puddle that I already had on the palette, I'm gonna try to get some of the middle lights. Now I'm gonna use my pinky to, to rest on the corner of the panel to give me some more support a little touch there for some light and then a little more light here from the palette. I think I might want to use more cobalt teal. A little more cobalt teal. And actually let's use some of the ultramarine blue. Why not? Okay, so here we have the, this corner r receiving more light. there just a little touch there for the light and I'm going to do the same thing on this corner of the eyelid to the right of your screen so switching brushes now to the half tone brush the mixtures I already had were probably too dark so moving my way up on the value scale I'm going to use some cadmium orange into the mixture Paint that in there just very slightly now. And it may be too orange, but let's just fill in this whole little plane now. Now I'm going to go back in over that with something that's cooler. A little bit more on the cooler side of the color, color scale, if you will. So let's drag the brush just very lightly now to try to mix them. And that's about it. Maybe just a little touch of light right here on the top of the eyelid. So that's about it. Okay, so now this plane of the nose. I'm going to want to work this plane in relation to uh, the surrounding planes. And I do see it to be a little bit more on the orangey side, a little bit more on the half tone side. So back to the half tone brush into this muted area of the color. The zinc white, cadmium orange. Again, I, I like to mix on top of the colors that were already there uh, because it, it kind of helps cut down on the saturation of my colors. And it builds nice little neutral color, so that's why you oftentimes see me mix right on top of mixtures I previously had. So let's see if this value will work. So something like this, I have to make a mark and then stand back. And it's kind of fitting. It might need a tad bit of alizarin and some of the darker values on the palette. So now let's see how that works. A little better. So again I'm relating the surrounding colors uh, to this one and of course this plane is receiving more light 
So I'm going to have to come back in and push these values a little bit more. But let's just work with these values for now. So it's a little bit lighter as we move closer to the top of the nose. It's a little bit lighter, just using the colors that were on my palette for that. And follow through up here, very lightly pressing down. Just very lightly trying to fill these colors in. This plane right here on the bottom of the glabella is going to be receiving more light. So I'm going to switch to my light brush. The mixtures that are already on there are pretty much what I want. Maybe a tad bit of the cadmium yellow that's kind of falling on the side there. Maybe a tad bit of the cadmium yellow. Why not? Just a little touch right there. That little touch kind of gives me a, a plane now, that a division of planes. So this little brush stroke gives me a division between the globella and the top plane of the nose. Might be too light, but I can switch to my halftone brush. And with these mixtures here on the side, with a little bit of yellow ochre, I can pick some of that color off and create another turning plane there. And I'm going to use it to just add a little more cadmium orange. I'm going to use it to build this plane here for the bulb of the nose. This area is receiving more light. And now it's getting a little bit darker as it traces down there. So I'm going to go in and paint in the dark accents of the nostril first. Uh, so going into the ivory black, but I don't want to use straight up ivory black. So ivory black on top of the mixtures that were already on here with some of the alizarin. Let's see what happens. Just a little touch there. Might be too red, so let's go into the ultramarine blue. Just a little touch there. closer to what I want. Follow through on the other side. Now let's paint in this plane. So it's a little bit a little bit more on the red side. So let's actually switch to the halftone brush. Cadmium red on top of these middle values and see what happens. And it's pretty good kind of the value I want. Maybe a little darker, so let's just trail a little bit lower down on the value scale. Maybe add some more raw umber, some alizarin crimson to describe the turning of this value. So we're describing the turn of the form with the value change. This is a very uh, fast curve, the nose wrapping around here, so that's why this uh, Delineations of values is actually happening very rapidly. It's a little darker down there. So now the highlight. So the highlight I'm going to use, it's pretty much bright white on the picture, but I would rather tint it with a little bit of some color. So I'm going to tint it with the cadmium yellow. Just a little bit of the cadmium yellow. Now I'm going to follow through to the side plane. Again, this side plane here. Noticing that this little area here is a little bit darker. So again, with this darker region of the flesh tones that I already have, maybe a little more alizarin into that. Let's try to further distinguish this value. So it's a little bit darker here, and it's going to trail off into the side just a little bit. Very light touch gives me a lighter edge. Let's work on the bottom third of the face now, and I'm going to start off with the uh, the shadow, actually. 
So I, s I see that the shadow on this area needs to be a little bit darker, so let's let's use that value scale on the palette now to help us out. Uh, so a little bit of raw umber with the alizarin. Let's use some uh, ultramarine blue. So let's see. Uh, let's uh, place it a little bit lower. I'm going to try and now place in this dark value for the the bottom of the mandible. Now I'm going to want to render very minimal in the shadow. I'm going to try to keep the shadow as almost like another dimension, but I do want this little delineation for the, the mandible. So I'm going to paint another value for the lighter region of that uh, portion on the shadow and just very minimal value change here almost nothing very very minimal yet still darker than it was before and again I'm pretty much just I'm adjusting the value range using uh, primarily raw umber, alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue primarily and mixing on top of these colors that were already on there and so this corner gets a little bit darker here now let's further articulate that light and shadow delineation so there's a little bit more of a almost like a little hook shape going this way for the corner of the orbicularis oris a little bit more of like a hook there. And now this whole region is going to be darker, so let's just flatten that out. But not quite as dark as that, so I'm going to come back and reestablish re that later. Or let's reestablish it now. So some, some of the yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, very lightly. I do see this to be a little bit warmer. So let's paint that in there. and then follow through with the back of the head. The back of the head's a little darker, so let's use the darker area of the palette for this corner and still try not to lose that peak of convexity that we had there. Now it might have gone too far out, so that's a good instance to use the brush that I already had for the background. So my designated background brush is cut right in there a little bit and that's it and it also helps me soften that edge there I want that edge maybe a little softer so now let's get into the dark lights for this area of the side plane of the of the face okay so let's use the half tone region of the palette. Now this mixture right here would work in terms of value but the hue, so the color, is a little bit too hot. So cobalt teal, some more cobalt teal. Let's see what it looks like. And that's about right, maybe a little cooler. More cobalt teal, just cobalt teal onto the colors that were already on there. Let's see, maybe a tad bit of ultramarine, a little bit, just trail some of it off, a little bit, not too much. Let's see what happens. It's good, that's about where I want it to be. So I'm going to follow through with this corner of the, the chin, the side plane of the chin. Now I'm going to switch back to the background, or sorry, with the uh, the shadow brush and further delineate this little dark shape here. It comes out a little bit further like that. Let's use a little more ultramarine blue. Something like that to delineate the mandible. 
and let's not lose the corner of the mandible, the ramus of the jaw. Remember it's a little bit lower on a horizontal in relation to the corner of the mouth. Corner of the mouth is about there, a ramus about there. So let's not lose that distinction. A little fan brush here. Alright, so I'm going to start off with the bottom region of the orbicularis oris here. So let's, uh, let's use some of the cadmium orange. Moving our way up on the value scale also. Cadmium orange and some, some more cobalt teal onto the colors we already had. So here's the bottom plane for the the bottom of the orbicularis oris. And this was the side of the orbicularis oris. Now this is the bottom. It makes a little W shape usually on the bottom of the mouth. And that might be too hot. So ultramarine blue just a little bit. These color changes are going to be very tiny. Tiny color changes. A little bit of ultramarine blue. So that's about where I want it to be. And now this value might actually work for the corner of the mouth. Let's just let's just change the hue a little bit. Some alizarin crimson. A little, little bit of alizarin crimson, not too much. That might be too much, so let's test it out. Oh, it's about fine. So now I want to develop the volume of this entire curve of the side of the mouth. So I'm going to start in uh, with the this plane right here. It makes a little shape right there. So my first guess is going to be that it's a little bit of yellow ochre onto this area of the palette with some of the sap green, tad bit of the zinc white, moving our way up the value scale. Let's see how that works out. It's about right. About where I want it to be. So let's fill in this plane now. So now there's going to be a delineation between this plane and the the top area of the orbicular or So this whole little shape here. So I'm going to first paint this transitioning plane here and again it's all just a series of shapes just a series of shapes in relation to one another that's all we're doing so the shape is just a little bit lighter again the basics is all about the simple shapes just a little bit lighter here now, as we work our way around here, we're going to notice that this side plane is going to be a little bit darker. So back to the halftone brush, into the middle area of the palette, may have put too much sap green. So let's go in with the cadmium red. Sap green and cadmium red don't like each other. They kind of cancel out in terms of intensity of color which is what I want in this case so something like that but a little lighter so let's use the let's use the cadmium yellow uh, that's about what I want so let's delineate this shape here now it curves out like this following kind of a diagonal with the corner of the nose, so let's do that. A little diagonal like that. Switch to the, the fan brush. Now again, this edge is going to be too sharp, uh, but I just have it like this so that I can have a distinction between one plane and the other plane. Now let's not forget the uh, dark shapes now for the the facial hair. Now let's look at the facial hair as resting on top of the 
underlying structures. So more of the sap green into this area of the value scale. Some more ultramarine blue. Don't want it to be super dark, not like the shadow, but just a little darker. Now let's see it as resting on top of this plane that we already established. And let's follow through with the this little dark shape here. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm looking at, and I just see a shape and I just paint the shape, and sometimes, most of the times, it will work better than if I'm trying to perfectly analyze what I'm looking at. Sometimes it's better just to feel things out. Just a little dark shape there. Now I'm going to use it to flatten this out too a little bit. Alright, so I need a plane here. So this little area here is known as the, uh, the filtrum. So this filtrum is the teardrop looking shape that we have between the top of the middle of our mouth and the bottom middle of our nose. It's a little bit cooler on this shape here, so kind of use the background color a little bit for this. Paint it in just like that. Very simply painting that in there. So now I'm going to paint in the lighter planes for the top of the upper lip. Just chose something that was already on my palette. And so I don't want to lose track of my center line. So when I make a mark like this, I would definitely stand back and see if this fits my center line, this little shape here. Now I'm going to go in and try to flatten this out now. So I'm going to use perhaps some alizarin and some cobalt teal and a little bit of cadmium red onto this area of the value scale, see what happens. And that's about what I want, so let's flatten this out. Now this is going to get darker. It is a side plane. So let's move further down on this value scale now. Maybe one down. Tint it a little more with the alizarin crimson. Remember before we used too much alizarin crimson, so not using as much this time. Still too much alizarin crimson, so ivory black. Let's see what happens. Now we're getting more of a turn for the the lip. So I'm going to follow through with the bottom lip. Just paint this little shape right now. So there's going to be a plane here. I'm going to switch to my lighter brush. Pretty much using the background colors now to paint the lighter planes. So on a vertical, it pretty much matches, it almost matches with the corner of the mouth. So or sorry, the corner of the mouth here almost matches with the corner of the nose, so let's let's make a mark. So that's about where I want it to be. So now the lighter plane of the lips, let's use a little bit of cadmium red onto that mixture that we already had. Some of the alizarin crimson. And let's just paint that plane in there. Very simply trying to apply just a simple plane here. So we have plane one, plane two, plane three. That's all that is. Might be just a little lighter, so the, let's use the, the, the white. A little more zinc white kind of helped us bring up this value. Now this area on the bottom of the lower lip is a little bit darker, so let's use some of the ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson to get that value back. So something like that, and then the corner of the mouth. Something like that. Alright, so there is a plane here for the top of the chin being created by the orbicular thorus wrapping around. So let's use the cobalt teal 
with a light brush with the colors we had for the lip and very simply just carve in this plane just like a sculptor and a chisel just carving right into it and creating a simple shape for the chin. Now let's follow through for the bottom. Let's try to uh, figure out the exact length of that chin. So it's a little lighter. So I'm going to use some of the uh, the zinc white with the alizarin crimson on the background color, pretty much. Let's see what this color looks like. And that's about what I want. So now I'm going to relate the corner of the mouth to the corner of this shape here on a vertical. They pretty much match up. So let's make a mark, something like that. We're going to make some, some big decisions now. So let's carve right into here. Now I'm going to put in the side of the the shirt that he's wearing. Just a little simple mixture of ultramarine blue and raw umber, and just that. And there's an angle going about like this, so let's paint that in there. Something like that. That may be all I would want, just to distinguish that area. Following through on the other side, this goes out about there. Use the fan brush there. Now it's a little bit of the zinc white and some of the raw umber and a tad bit of the flesh tone mixtures. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to create just a little glimpse of light here. Very slightly. Now I don't want too much. I don't want too much light there. Even though in the photo reference it may look really bright. It's not in fact that bright. That area of the sclera. Now over here. I'm going to follow through. It's just a little touch of light. Very small little touch of light. And then on the other side of the eye, just a tad bit more of the raw umber should give me just a step down in value. A step down from here and here, yet still a little bit lighter than what's currently on the panel. Just a little touch there. And now for the highlights of the eyes, I'm just going to use the zinc white and a tad bit of the cadmium yellow. Just a little bit should give me the highlight that I would like. It's a steady touch there. And again, if the highlight's in the wrong place, the painting won't blow up. It's not going to be the end of the world. Just go back in with the the uh, darker mixtures for the eye. A little touch there. And for the nose, with just a combination of ivory black, alizarin crimson, and some raw umber, I'm going to go ahead and further distinguish the shape here angles up a little bit like this I'm going to follow through on the other side of the nose don't see too much of the other nostril just a little glimpse now there's another plane catching a little bit of light uh, right here, so this is just pretty much the lighter flesh tone that I probably had here. Just painting in that, let it trail a little bit to the bottom. 
and there's some light being caught right here in the bottom of the wing of the nose. Very small. So back with the mixture that I had earlier. Make more of a definitive shape. Follow through on the other side of that light plane. And there you have it. A little bit more alizarin and crimson, some sap green. Let's paint in this side plane now. I'm giving the smaller shapes as much respect as I gave the larger shapes. Just relating each shape to one another. And again, I want to get this shape as accurately as I can, this dark shape here. From a distance, you'll probably notice this dark shape uh, very quickly before you'll notice any of these little undulations. Now with the half tone here. Just letting it trail into the bottom here. Now this value is a little bit darker here, so just a little bit of the ivory black with some of the darker flesh tones. I'm going to make a mark now. Very simply. And now with a mixture of zinc white, ivory black, and a tad bit of cadmium red, I'm going to add the highlight for the bottom of the lips. I need a little more cadmium red, just a little bit. Very lightly painting that on there. Doesn't take much. Now I'm going to move on to the neck. In the neck I'm most likely going to abbreviate a little more, have more of a vignette. Uh, and if you don't know what vignette means, vignette means just uh, areas that you leave unfinished, but you leave them unfinished in such a way that they complement the more finished areas. So now I'm going to follow through this uh, muscle right here for the corner of the neck. So I believe the sternocleidomastoid goes down right about there, and then it meets with the uh, the sternum, the suprasternal notch over here, and then we have the clavicle that's making an angle, making an angle in this kind of uh, fashion. Now the color, I have to stand back after filling in the shape and see if this color fits with the colors that I had on the the side plane of the face. They're pretty close, but I think maybe a tad bit of cobalt teal. So let's put in just a little bit of cobalt teal into that, see what it does. I think that's a little better. So this shape makes a little turn right here and then curls up like that. Now I'm going to go and paint in the dark of the shirt. So I'm going to use a different brush for that and I'm going to thin it out. I'm going to thin the paint with just a little bit of walnut oil. So now for the dark area of the shirt, I'm going to use ultramarine blue, a little bit of alizarin crimson. Uh, let's see what it does dark so maybe a little bit of cobalt teal and too bright blue let's use some yellow ochre and that's about where I want it so now I'm just gonna fill in this shape 
does something like that. Curves around here. And let's not forget the dark accents, but first the fan brush. So the dark accent, there's going to be an accent right here where the neck meets the form of the, the collar. And that area right here is going to be receiving the least amount of light. So it makes a shape somewhat like that. There's even a little bit of ambient light back here. You can use the same brush I made this with. Maybe a tad bit of the background color into this color. Just a few little touches for that. Again, I don't really want to lose my light and shadow delineation, but there was a little light there. Now I'm going to want to uh, paint in these planes here for the neck. Uh, but first I'm going to go in and paint the rest of the abbreviation for the collar. So with very, very little paint, I'm just going to let this uh, go down. So I'm kind of just scumbling a little value over here. And again, you don't really have to copy exactly what you're looking at. In this case, I definitely won't. Uh, just for the composition to to work, I'm only going to put just a little glimpse of the collar. Now I'm saying collar, but this is not actually a collar. I'm painting it somewhat like a collar. So a darker value here. So I'm pretty much making up this collar looking shape. Again, this is pretty much just a compositional idea. You can call it artistic license if you want. I'm just trying to paint something that looks like a collar in this kind of form. So just about that will do. And then of course the angle of the shoulder so a little bit of cobalt teal. Let's push some of the blues for the shadow right here. Let's push some of the blues, see what happens. Something like that. And fan it out. Now f following through on the other side, going to be lighter of course. I'm going to use the same brush. Not too worried about losing the saturation of this blue. Let's paint just a little light there. Just a few little brush strokes. Sometimes that's all you need. And maybe a little more ultramarine blue, cobalt teal, a tad bit more of the white. For some touches of light just here. A few little touches of light. Don't need much. Now for this area of the neck, I'm going to flatten it out first, but I'm going to consider this dark light. So, with the middle area of the palette, just a little bit more a deep orange with the alizarin crimson. I'm gonna paint this plane in. Just one little plane in the half tone region. And now I'm gonna flatten all of this out. So I'm using the zinc white with these colors that were already on the palette. And I'm just gonna flatten them out. Was very uh, with a very light touch. Just gonna flatten it out, soften that edge there. Now back to the fan brush. So there's gonna be a darker value here. So I'm gonna paint that in there. Sometimes you don't even have to know what it is. 
it's just a dark value that you see, but in this case it's the super sternal notch. It's going to receive a little more light here. Just a little more light here as the the super ster the sternocleidomastoid connects to the to the clavicle here. And I'm not an anatomist, so if I get any of these terms wrong, don't quote me on these. They're just shapes. This shape is lighter, this shape is darker, and then I flatten the rest of these shapes. That's all that's going on. A little bit more of a half tone here. Again, I'm going to be abbreviating, uh, meaning I'm not going to finish this area of the painting as much as I did with these areas. And again, I can still push this dark light a little more. It's just taking what's on the palette. It's still a little bit darker, so back to the alizarin crimson and the sap green. My favorite mixture that you've seen me use. Just mixing them till I get a nice little muted color. I go back in here. Try to get that dark light. Don't need much to get this to read. So now the very last thing I'll do is with a uh, very thin sable brush or a watercolor brush, very light, we soften some of these edges. It's still a very light touch. Doesn't take much. Very light touch. I'm going to do the same to this little corner here. It's very lightly feathering it out. I only like to do this after I delineate which plane that I want. So this plane is differentiated from this plane. So now all I'm going to do is just soften the edge just a little bit. A very light touch without losing the distinction between those planes. And that about wraps up this week's portrait painting demonstration. I hope it helps you out. I really tried to explain each step as much as I could to try to make it more of a uh, basics video. So I hope this helps you out, and I will see you on the next video. Have a wonderful week.